people often meet me and they're like, oh, I thought you were gonna be some crazy drug addict asshole. I'm like, no, nah, that's just like a character that I play that's exaggerated, you know, uh, for comedy effect. Um, but in real life, like, I'm actually the dude who wants to watch the History Channel and, and fucking, like, not go to the after hours party after a show. Like, people will be at the show like, oh, let's go party after dirt. And I'm like, fuck, dude, I just want to go back to my room alone and, like, fucking watch, you know, Discovery Channel and pass out. I don't want to party with some stranger in Denver. I don't even know you, dude. Like, you crazy? Um, so I think, I think I'm more humbled in real life than people might imagine. Yo, what's up? This is Red Dirt Nasty Foo from LMFAO. I'm in hotel, bitch. Drink all day. Smoke all night. Get some herpes. I'm at the doctor's office. I grew up in the Bay. I grew up in San Francisco, Berkeley, Oakland, Alameda, the whole Bay Area. And I think up there is a really different world compared to LA. It's not based on Hollywood stuff. It's more, you know, blue collar. People do real shit up there. And I think, in general, people in Northern California are pretty down to earth, pretty cool heads, you know, it's, it's a completely different world up there. So being from the Bay, I think that molded my sense of humor, my music taste. No matter where you go, it's all about where you're from and how you grew up and growing up in the Bay. I think it puts a good head on your shoulders. I've been all over the world and it's so diverse up there. It's like you've grown up around blacks, whites, Asians, Indians, gays, whatever, tranny. I mean, it's fucking, you get it all up there. So I think that may have a lot to do with who I am now. Hey. Party people, hey. my party people. Hey. Now I got everything that a dude could want. I moved to LA in 98. I came out here from New York. I lived in New York for five years and uh, I worked for MTV as a VJ. So I, back then, this is like, like pre-Twitter, fucking pre-YouTube, all that shit. So I came to LA with like 500 bucks in my pocket and rented a guest house and I had a 79 Cadillac Coupe de Ville that I bought for like a G. And I was driving around to auditions and I'm like, Fuck, maybe I could get you know some work out here. Who knows? I started taking acting classes, and dude, I just started booking jobs. I started booking TV shows, movies. I kind of did it just on a fuck it. I, I've got this one, you know. I could ride this MTV thing a little bit, and it was just like work for me. But I also don't want to tell people don't chase your dreams. I did it, but at the same time, I also see so many people get their fucking dreams crushed out here, and so many people come out here and not do shit and bail out of here. That I'm kind of like, ah. Uh, you know, just have something to fall back on, dude. Don't just let this be your only thing. Get a real job, you know what I mean? Because there's so many broken dreams out here. So gnarly. Blue at the spot, there was nothing but freaks. This dude was dancing like way off beat. My pops left when I was two, and uh, my mom remarried a couple times to a couple guys who were, you know, not the best dudes in the world. One of them was uh, like a cocaine addict and an alcoholic. So as a kid, I used to have to go to like AA meetings when I was like 10. And it was like my mom's husband's, you know, fucking drug problems. I'm like, why am I in these meetings? I didn't do shit. So I got exposed at a really young age to the evils of, of alcohol and cocaine. So that was, a, you know, fucking, a, I think subconsciously ingrained in my head that, you know, coke and alcohol is the devil and weed ain't that bad, you know, shit like that. And don't get me wrong, I'll have a drink, but Anytime I got into some trouble, it was like alcohol was the root of it, you know? I always said weed is like the boys club. It keeps you off the streets and out of trouble. You smoke some weed and you fucking stay at home and <laughs> play video games or whatever the fuck, make a beat. Uh, you drink and go out, a fight, something's gonna happen. It's just, some, it's just the odds of some shit going wrong are just way more, you know? And I could go a month without a drink, easy, you know? It's a little harder to go a month without a hit of weed. You know, the weed kind of meditates and brings you to reality. I think the weed humbles you a lot too, you know? I'm not saying go smoke weed, but like of all the things that are out there, it's like weed is the least of the on the totem pole of the problems in our society with drugs and shit, you know? I think this country's pilled the fuck up. Someone I know is either on fucking benzodiazepams, Valium Xanax, painkillers, sleeping pills. Like we really self-medicate a lot in this country more than other places. You go to Australia, they just drink some beer, they don't even smoke that much weed. I think it's like our new epidemic is fucking like a pill nation because you get a fucking doctor with your name on it so you don't even realize how bad it is. And that to me is the devil more than a crack dealer is some white doctor with a fucking doctor's outfit on giving you a prescription for some shit. Those are the big drug dealers, you know what I mean? So that shit's kind of gnarly, you know? Was that? Uh, oh yeah, baby, that's it. The, the world just got more worse because me 
Big Riff Rap, and Andy got a verse. Check it. Your mom has no legs.